Doctor consumed a transformation potion and instantly became incredibly powerful, easily overpowering dozens of strong men. To everyone's surprise, this man was even more ruthless than the doctor himself. As he downed an entire bottle of the potion, the situation was now completely out of control. The story takes place before World War I. In the dead of night, a tank rampaged through the streets of England, faced with an unprecedented steel behemoth. The police were helpless and could only watch. The tank smashed through the doors of a bank and blasted open the vault with a cannon. Soldiers seized a large amount of wealth and blueprints for Venice's architecture. A few days later, the same men destroyed a German Zeppelin factory and captured a number of leading scientists. These series of attacks fueled suspicion among the unaware European nations. A world war was imminent. To crush this evil force, the British government dispatched an ambassador to Africa. In a tavern, they found the legendary adventurer Alan. The Queen of England wants Alan to lead a team of men with extraordinary powers to stop an impending world war. Clearly, someone didn't want Alan to intervene. A gang of thugs stormed the bar and gunned down Alan's friends. These individuals were peculiar, clad in bulletproof armor and wielding advanced weaponry. But, against the battle-hardened Alan, they had no advantage whatsoever. The last thug attempted to flee. Alan calmly put on his glasses and shot the thug down. As the crowd attempted to extract information from the dying thug, he used poison to end his own life. Simultaneously, the explosives left by the thugs detonated in the tavern. It was evident that Alan had drawn the attention of this malevolent force. It was time to take action in this chaotic world. So Alan left the heat of Africa and returned to rainy England. The leader of the operation, Mr. M, introduced Alan to the team members of the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, Captain Nemo from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, a master of science far beyond his era, Rodney, known as the Invisible Man and the King of Thieves whose true form was revealed when he smeared sunblock on his face. The renowned female vampire Mina Harker, in a bid to thwart the Shadows plot to instigate a global war, leaders of European nations are set to hold a secret summit in Venice four days from now. Mr. M seeks to have Alan lead the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen team to prevent the Shadows' disruption of the meeting. The problem is, getting to Venice in four days seems unlikely, but that's no problem for the high-tech Captain Nemo. Soon after, he proudly showcased his state-of-the-art luxury vehicle. The group quickly arrived at an ancient mansion in the futuristic car. The man who opened the door was none other than the immortal Dorian. Careful Alan notices that a portrait is missing from the wall, which is the secret of the immortals. Initially disinterested in saving the world, Dorian's stance changed immediately upon seeing Mina Harker among the team members. It turns out they had known each other for a long time and had a past that cannot be described. While they were discussing how to deal with the Phantom, a group of night people with advanced equipment surrounded them. The man in the mask was the Phantom who invited the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen to join him and start a world war. This way he can sell weapons to countries and get rich from the war. At that moment, a young American fired the first shot, initiating a chaotic battle. The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen displayed their exceptional skills, even in the face of the Shadow's advanced weaponry. Surprisingly, Captain Nemo not only possessed advanced technology but also formidable combat prowess. Dorian can take bullets with his undead body. Rodney swiftly wiped off sunscreen from his face. Activating stealth mode, Dorian's bullet-riddled body rapidly regenerated, leaving his opponent astonished. A man who escaped the net took Mina Harker hostage to save his life. Little did he know, the seemingly delicate woman was a vampire. Tom is a member of the U.S. Secret Intelligence Service. The U.S. government feared that if a global war erupted, the flames would quickly spread to the American continent. Impressed by Tom's courage, Alan received a Winchester rifle, and Tom successfully joined the League. Their final destination was Paris, where they needed to recruit the last team member. When discussing transportation, Captain Nemo's enthusiasm surged proudly presenting his masterpiece the legendary Nautilus, a colossal submarine emerging from the water aboard the Nautilus. They arrived quickly in Paris. During an experiment, Dr. Henry accidentally concocted a transformative potion that, when consumed, bestowed immense strength akin to that of the Hulk. At the same time, the potion can also make people lose their minds. Under relentless pursuit by Alan and Tom, Dr. Henry fell into a trap and was captured onto the Nautilus. Expelled from Britain due to heinous crimes, Dr. Henry's desire to return home prompted him to join the League. <laughs> 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 
With this, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was now fully assembled. With just three days until the Venice summit, Captain Nemo ordered the Nautilus to advance at full speed. The Nautilus, a veritable marvel of submarine engineering, cut through the waves like a blade. However, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen was not as harmonious as it appeared. While Alan instructs Tom in shooting practice, Captain Nemo discovers that the Nautilus has been tampered with and is off course, and a bottle of Dr. Henry's potion was stolen at some point. Rodney seems to be the only one who could have done it so quietly. Although the Nautilus successfully reached Venice as planned, the Phantom had rigged the city's underwater structures with explosives. Captain Nemo was about to send a diver down to defuse the explosives. Just then, there's a violent explosion, and the buildings of Venice collapse like dominoes. The only way to prevent further catastrophe was to destroy key structures and halt the chain reaction. Tom, driving a supercar, encountered an ambush by concealed gunmen. Vampire Queen Mina Harker displayed her true power, commanding a swarm of bats to clear a path for Tom by overwhelming the attackers. Tom reached the target and launched a signal flare into the sky, guided by the coordinates. A rocket shot up from the Nautilus, ultimately putting an end to the disaster. Alan, in the midst of his fight with the Phantom, inadvertently tore off his mask, only to discover that he was none other than Mr. M. Simultaneously, the true traitor was exposed. Dorian killed Captain Nemo's crewman, seizing an oddly shaped lifeboat to escape Venice. It turned out that Mr. M orchestrated the entire ordeal for a sinister purpose, to acquire superhuman abilities and technology. Mr. M had Dorian covertly steal Captain Nemo's tech blueprints, Dr. Henry's potion, Mina Harker's blood, and Rodney's skin samples. His plan was to create a technologically enhanced army of mutants to unleash war and conquer the world. The calamity was far from over. However, Mr. M's recording triggered explosives hidden aboard the Nautilus, flooding the vessel. In order to save everyone's lives, Dr. Henry drank a potion and opened the drain valve at the last moment. The Nautilus resurfaced, averting catastrophe. You're wondering where Rodney's been. It turns out he had stealthily tracked Phantom to a secret base in the frigid northern wastelands. Following Rodney's intel, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen arrived at the destination. Over the past few days, Rodney had thoroughly investigated the situation here. The secret base was ridiculously large. Weapons were being manufactured around the clock, including Nautilus. Mr. M had amassed numerous scientists to study the mutant serum, intending to sell it at a high price to other nations. The potential consequences of these items getting into the wrong hands were unimaginable. Time was running out. Prompting the League to take action, Rodney discreetly placed explosives within the base. The others forced their way into the base. Under heavy fire, Dr. Henry raises a steel plate to cover Captain Nemo as he rescues the scientists. Meanwhile, Mina Harker confronted the immortal Dorian Gray. These two former lovers, both immortal and possessing rapid regeneration, seemed equally matched. But, Dorian had a fatal weakness the portrait he had removed from the wall. A single glance at it would trigger his transformation. Ultimately, Dorian crumbled to dust upon viewing the portrait. Tom had a stroke of bad luck when he encountered a soldier who had consumed an invisibility potion. An armored flamethrower-bearing soldier began an indiscriminate blaze. Rodney selflessly rushed in to rescue Tom, ending up severely burned himself. Dr. Henry, displaying exceptional valor, proved unstoppable in his assault. In a fit of rage, the other party drank an entire bottle of potion, and his body instantly turned into a huge monster. Dr. Henry experienced true fear for the first time as he found himself completely defenseless against the monster's relentless attacks. Captain Nemo's attempt to provide support proved futile as he was sent flying several meters away with a single punch. Direct confrontation proved futile. To make matters worse, Dr. Henry's serum wore off, leaving them with no option but to flee. In their direst moment, Rodney's preset explosives detonated, the structure crumbled, and massive debris rained down, crushing the monster. After a fierce struggle, Alan managed to subdue Mr. M. Just then, Tom was taken hostage by a soldier who had consumed an invisibility potion. Alan turned around and shot Tom to save him, but he was stabbed by Mr. M. An escape opportunity emerged. Mr. M made a mad dash for the lifeboat with the potion kit. Encouraged by Alan's words, Tom steadied his breathing and pulled the trigger, hitting a target several hundred meters away. The pill box sank beneath the ice. However, Alan's injuries proved fatal, and his heart stopped beating, honoring his wishes. 
Tom returned Alan's body to Africa for burial. Alan had once claimed he possessed a wizard's blessing, preventing his death as long as he remained in Africa. As the team said goodbye to their old mate and left, the sorcerer mouthed an ancient incantation. The earth shook as the winds shifted. Maybe Alan really is the Nirvana he says he is. Ah!